Stephen, if you could uh, turn your webcam back on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beyond the Bridge, um, Session 6, Part 4. The Undead Bill. Bill the Undead. Bill the shambling mass of flesh now inhabited by a former husk of himself has risen from the dead and lurches forward. However, everyone was very cautious and aware of him. So they're just about to have a surprise round on poor old Bill. Or Bill the Younger. Gabriel, you're the swiftest to react as Bill stumbles from his vine-like teleportation. Well, I guess I will just shoot at him with my crossbow with its magically lit bolt. No, not magically lit. Yep. The one weakness poor Bill had. Okay. Light. Or crossbow bolts. Yeah. Well, take your pick, really. So, you loose Yikes. a bolt and it sticks into the uh, figure of Bill. And Bill doesn't really seem to care. But it's it stuck in him, so he's lit by the bolt. That's he all right for me. lit up. Like a Christmas tree, okay. with a solid, uh, a one light source. Uh, Okie dokes, and then it would be the Imperial Majesty of Rhea, if you could please. Act. Not, not Imperial Majesty, wrong rogue. <laughs> no, I didn't mean Imperial Majesty as in an agent of the Empire. I meant Imperial Majesty oh. as in very, you know. Oh, you know, in that commanding. case, thank you. You're welcome. It was a compliment. <laughs> You empire so, dog, you. I obviously have uh, advantage, right? Most definitely. <laughs> Alright, well, whichever you like. I mean, it doesn't matter to me, really. Roll up damage. What are you, what are you attacking with? Uh, uh, short bow. So, okay. Uh, it's 2d6. It's 1d6 damage for first level, right? Yep. Oh, you, you sneak attack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thirteen. Cool. So you shoot uh, Bill square in the face, and the bolt just sticks in his forehead, and he stares at you undying. Caden Moore, what do you do? Um, I will. Uh, I d I'm not sure where my servants are on here, but I would have imagined they were out in front of us a little way. Um, how far is old Bill away from me? Sixty feet. Maybe a bit more because you're at the back. Yeah, that's right. So I will have to move forward. Um, oh, I didn't see Bill. He was under the turn order thing. Yeah, that's right. He's hiding. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just retcon in that I moved, so I'm not at the front after I shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move. I'll move forward uh, that number of feet and order my servants to move towards Bill and um, douse him in oil. Um, uh, they cannot douse him in oil. Such would be an attack. They can right. attack. All right, then. In that case, I'll pour. I'll I'll tell them to pour oil in this area here in front of him, in a line. Okey dokes. So they'll pour three oil flasks there, um, and I will then um, firebolt Master Bill. Well, go for it. Okay, let's have a look. Um, as a as a point, uh, won't retcon it this time. But you can only command a servant one at a time as a bonus action. Um, your firebolt slams into Bill, and he ignites in a ball of flame. Mm, interesting. Uh, do 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 do. Um, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do 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 do. And stands there, flaming. He, I'm assuming, what you wanted to do was dirt, 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 dirt with the oil. Kenmore, Stephen. Yes, um, more, more actually, so he can't step round it. But anyway. Oh, you wanted to the... like go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess I 
he doesn't have a. We've got surprise, haven't we? So. Yep. So he doesn't actually get an action. So it'll yep. be straight to Robin. So I'll take the dodge action and move forward a wee bit to make myself a big target for him and bang my, bang my shield and shout insults. Okay. <laughs> you filthy undead scum! <laughs> he stares at you with eyes that burn, and his his flesh melts. It almost looks like tears. Gabriel, your mother was a murloc. Oh god, this coffee. Mm. So Gabriel, what do you do? There is now a standing, but on fire, crying tears of his own melting flesh. Uh, flesh zombie. Um, I don't think I've got anything else I can do but try and shoot him again and hope I do some damage this time. Go for it. Let's click the button. Has it appeared? Yep, it's appeared. So you shoot the uh, former figure of Bill through the head with a with a crossbow, and this one pounds into the other bolt that is in him, and he like head splits open, his brain bursts up into the sky, and he shambles forward a bit and falls down. The oil ignites, and he burns in a funeral pyre. He is no more. Rest in peace, Bill. Well, that was easy. I didn't even get to fight them. <laughs> Where are the twig blights and things that uh, birthed him? Um, Can we see? You are looking at a fenced off, like, vine sprouting area. And it's within the range of your detect magic. You no longer sense any magic from there. Right. Okay. This um, all. From your I arcana asked, check. I asked Robin to go and poke it with his 10 foot pole. From your Ar- Arcana check earlier, Caden Moore, when you um, when I asked you to to make one when you were detecting magic, you do not believe that this thing was like transported here by by twig blights and moved up. You believe it was transported using the the plant as a um, as like a conduit, but yeah, it's tree, it's tree stri- force. It's tree striding basically. That's a druid spell. I shout out into the night. Show yourself. Silence echoes back. <laughs> yeah, now now you speak about the ten foot pole. I get it, get it ready, and start just I say, poking, I, I say, poking the I ground. Do not, I do not know what your purpose is in this, but know this: if you do not cease your attacks, I will burn the forest to ash. The field remains without answer. <laughs> I don't think the forest is talking to you. Here, just follow behind me. I'll I'll poke our way to the tree, and I start walking towards like the the field and with the ten foot pole and just poking the area ahead of me as I walk along, I rearm, like a blind I, I, man. I rearm my servants and tell them basically all to form a line in front of the paladin, and to I give them more two oil flasks each and a, a lit torch, and I will sweep the area with the tech magic. Who's gonna pull the cart with the keg of oil? Let us instead get my servants to roll it. <laughs> okay. okay. We're going slow anyway, so I'm tapping so with Paul. trundle pole. slowly towards the tree, edging yes. ever closer, protecting yourself with spells of magical detection and a ten-foot pole that would easily <laughs> disturb any nestling creature. Um... Rhea, could you please give me a perception test? And who has the ten foot pole, by the way? It was Robin, wasn't it? Robin. Yeah. Do I get advantage because of the ten foot pole? <laughs> uh, not on this uh, test, no. This is not relating God to damn. the ten foot pole. God damn. <sighs> okay. mm, this coffee's really good. That roll wasn't, though. I'm calling my owl in for overflight as well at some point. I'm gonna, just going to have it. We need an owl you! <laughs> yeah, we do. It bursts into flames again. Yeah, well, if it does, at least we'll see where the, the flames come from. So, 
<laughs> you see a send off your owl, right? I want I want it right directly above us. And it has dark vision, so how, an advantage. How high above you? Um, no, I wouldn't say that high. Let's. Okay. Um, Can you uh, make a perception and a stealth test? Okay. Uh, what do I see with a twelve? Um, with a twelve, you see the tree open for you. You see a, a field arrayed with uh, twigs and vines and other grizzly ghouls. Okay. Oh, nothing spectacular of any sort. So it gets a stealth of 20, but a perception of only 13. A stealth of 20? Yep. And a perception of 13? Yep. Cool. Okay. Hmm. But its passive is 18, if that matters. <laughs> well, let me try that one again. Actually, um, could you please make a uh, persuasion check, Caden Moore? Persuasion. Uh, this is relating to your like calling out earlier. Uh, also, um, Stephen, is it is it possible for you to turn your webcam back on? Or is that what's it's causing po issues? Him. It's it's possible, but I think it's going to cause a problem. Yeah, so I, okay. if you don't mind, I'll leave it off. Sorry. Okay. Um, let me see if I can readjust that so it actually does show people correctly because <laughs> at the moment everyone's getting like half a face there we go that's better <laughs> yeah never mind i can just fix it on my end there we go uh there we go okay cool um persuasion test cool so <laughs> <laughs> not gonna do it no no You get closer and closer and closer to the tree. What distance from the tree are you going to do something? Your um, uh, pole please. tells no tales, your detect magic, senses no further malign entity. I think um, we should uh, stop at 50 feet. 60. Si 60. No, and before 60 that... feet, you cease to move, and before you stand a great oak, it's body easily as wide as a human and its boughs spread high above you. Its roots have pushed its way into the field and fill it on all directions, their tendrils pushing through the field and uprooting the once healthy plants. The spiked vines grow throughout and bushes now crop up everywhere in the field. The tree itself is surrounded by a number of these little bushes. Kidmore. Uh, Detect magic. There is nothing magical about the tree. There is nothing magical about the bushes. There's nothing magical within your field of detect magic. And your owl reports no movement. I think I've got an idea. Master Robin, you probably won't like this. But what we're going to do is we're going to attach a rope to you, and you're going to go up to the tree and touch it with your pole. And if you start gibbering madly, like some of the other people did, we'll just yank you back with the rope. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to do that, and we're just going to set the tree on fire. <laughs> I, I aim at the tree and cast message and say to it, we mean it no harm, but this cannot go on. It has killed humans, and there will be retribution. Even if it slays us, others will come. <laughs> um, make a persuasion test and make them intelligent saving throw. All right. Well, that... oh, Jesus. <laughs> Dude. I have expertise in this. Oh. If only I could talk to the tree. Oh, you more than way, I was... to walk up and talk to it. We'll tie a rope I was around you. I was, I was talking to the tree and um, Sylvian as well, by the way, so if that makes any difference. My saving oh. throw is 50. I'll get close at the tree if you want. Just... Okay. Promise you'll pull just, me back if I um, start Just give me a, a moment to check something real quick and I'll tell you the results. I really wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> 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 yeah. dum, dum, dum. So 
Sorry about this. Do, 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 do. So the weather seems nice. Yep, yep. If anything happens to me, just roll the barrel towards the bloody tree. <laughs> just push it. What I just push it and so burn, burn, burn that tree down. Because don't bother with whatever happens to okay, me. Because I'll... Cool. Um, the response to your, your message is silence. The tree remains there. You're not even sure if the message contacted the tree or if the tree is able to respond. You know that if it were an awakened tree or a tree ant or something that had been given sentience by magic, you would be detecting magic right now. But you cannot. It's a trick. And yet the tree came, the tree you appeared made, in one night. Tell us what saving throw was that something that triggered his detect magic? No, it could be an illusion. It could be that the tree is blocking my, my ability to sense it by using illusion magic to mask my divination, possibly. I'm just speculating. I say we burn the tree down. It appeared in one night. It appeared in one night. It has agree. to be something. It's not natural. And the contract's to get rid of the tree, right? So if we get rid of the tree, we've fulfilled the contract. They can't argue with that. I'll get my servants to roll the, uh, the barrel of oil up to the tree with enough force. And I, tell, I, I, I caution my fellows to prepare themselves to uh, set fire to the cask. Okie dokes. You do as such. Yeah, I light one of my oil doused arrows on like some torch someone's carrying. Okay. Um, and I need another moment to check. And okie dokes. Hmm. Let me think for a moment. Okay. By my count, there's 35 flasks of oil in that keg. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Initial and... explosion doesn't destroy the tree, the fire will. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. So, as your servants begin pushing the keg of oil, like, towards the tree, Caden Moore, you sense another conjuration aura in the ground around where your unseen servants are pushing this keg of oil forth. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Um, I order them to continue... Um, uh, continue onwards, and I warn my companions. What kind of aura am I registering? Is it uh, undead again? Conjuration. Or? Conjuration. So something's being summoned. Same aura that you 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 know sensed when um, the zombie appeared. Uh, conjuration aura. Didn't you say that? You're not I necessarily like to... feeling yeah, like what's coming, but you're sense. feeling the magic that is bringing something. Yeah, I'll, I'll activate my divine sense. Do I sense celestial fiend or undead within sixty foot, or consecrated or hallowed ground? Or desecrated ground, sorry. You sense none of these things. Actually, wait. I've... You're within 60 foot of the tree. You sense desecrated ground. Oh. Right. Yes. Specifically the area around the tree itself within 10 feet. Right. Right, the tree definitely needs um, to die. Is desecrated. Okay, I'm firebolting. I'm putting a firebolt right where I see that conjuration. If nothing else, to mark it for my companions. Um, the conjuration is literally below the... Um, in the ground where your unseen servants are walking. You could firebolt the keg while your unseen servants march. Do you say it to us? Like, where you, where you see the conjuration? Yeah, yeah. I, I, say, I say, another conjuration! It must be it's the a, roots or connected. It's, it's not connected undead. Don't roots. worry about that. So we can't we can't see the servants, but we can see the barrel they're rolling. Yeah. I, I just raise my uh, crossbow and point in that general direction, seeing if anything sprouts up, and if it does, I'll shoot it. In. And I will prepare. I will use mage hand if anything tries to stop the barrel of uh, being from. If anything grasps my servants, um, even though they're invisible, I will push the keg onwards with mage hand. I take the dodge action. <laughs> okay, if you could all just click your tokens and roll them, that would be grand. Uh, and I'll just go 
This is an unseen servant, this is an unseen servant, this is an unseen servant, this is the keg. Boop. And I just, I don't know, move that all. <laughs> oh, why would you do that? Why would I put you on the wrong layer? There we go. Ah. Oh. Jesus. That's with our initiative. I think you should What's make a rule that ones are banned. They should automatically be tens. You should be a halfling like me, and you can re-roll your ones. Problem <laughs> solved. Uh, doop, 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 doop. Um, doop. I don't know. Doop, they're definitely doop. all behind me. <laughs> okay. Doop, 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 doop. Cool. Oh. Okay. I warn my companions as well not to go within ten feet of the tree. Do not step on the ground. It is evil. And all that. I was the one that told you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you think we could safely get within 10 feet? Just don't get any closer than you need to, Valeri. <laughs> so, uh, -da -da -da. you see the ground bubble and boil beneath the unseen servants. And then you see three shapes arise out of the uh, ground itself. You can see bits of grass falling off them, and as they rise up, you can see baleful little white eyes burning with an almost like um, white-hot fire within them. They seem malleable and wet, brown like the dirt itself, and they immediately set upon the Unseen Servants, striking wildly. Um, with, with disadvantage, because they're, they're invisible. That is correct. Thank you. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. What am I looking for? That's what I'm looking for. Cool. Da, 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 da. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. cool. So um, the unseen servants will act on Caden Moore's initiative. So. Um, F attacks Unseen Servant to the right, and it just like lashes out with its gloopy gloop. And the Unseen wow. Servant has what, 8 AC is it? 10? Help me out here. It has, it has an AC of 10. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. So the, the first one like lunges towards the uh, invisible servant dragging this barrel of oil, and the barrel of oil rolls forward. Um, you've still got detect magic up. Um, so, Cadenmore, you can tell, though the conjuration aura is gone, these creatures are of magic itself. You can sense a conjuration aura upon them as well. Mm. Um, Robin, what do you do? I, uh... Gladly dive into battle and uh, attack this one here. Cool, go for it. Yes, yes. Okay, so nice. you thrust your sword into this small little puddle of muck. Uh, C, D, and F, and you attack D. Uh, 18. And you slide your sword into it, and it comes out sticky with brown substance. The creature turns to face you. Oh, lovely. <laughs> uh, d -d 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 okay, to... Okay, cool. Uh, C attacks the Unseen Servant to the right of it. And as it lashes out, it fails to find the creature. <laughs> Rhea, what do you do? I will shoot D with a regular arrow, and I have a sneak attack because... You have an ally adjacent. helping out? Yep. Uh, does one of those hit? Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> sneak attack doesn't give um, you much. Yeah. yeah. But the first <laughs> one hits, so you're fine. Eleven. So your arrow, like... Oh, sorry, ten, 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 ten. Okay, so your arrow pierces the face of this misshapen mass of ground, and it, like, splits open, and then forms, like, a little face, almost, in its chest, and now it just has, like, a neck stump. 
out of which like there's a clump of ground. It's still um, alive? Yep. D attacks Robin. Robin, you're visible. I am. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, AC is better than 12, though, I assume. It is indeed, it's 18. So this thing, like, slams into you with these sticky morass hands, and you feel grass, like, wiping off on you, but you're fine. Your armor takes the brunt of it. You've, you've taken in stronger hits from a drunken man in a pub. These things, by the way, are, are quite small, um, and they come up to about the same height as you, Robin. <laughs> the half things are. Yeah. Um, Gabriel, what do you do? Well, I'm going to do the same as Rhea. And shoot at it with my ranged weapon with sneak attack. Cool. Um, it hits the little sticky mass in the face, and it pops with a kind of like. Um, Robin, could you please make a dexterity saving throw? And Caden Moore, could you make a dexterity saving throw for the unseen servant to the left? Uh, if How would like an act of twenty? <laughs> oh, I don't think it has a dex. So if um, there's an if there's any damage, it's gonna it's gonna no, take it. No, it doesn't get damaged. Um, I don't think. So. Yeah, yeah. So, Robin, you're completely fine. However, the unseen servant to the left is like showered in this sticky goop. This brown dirt just showers it, and it like solidifies, and it sticks it to the ground like some little clay statue. <laughs> Oh, Moore, could you, you also mark mark uh, where the barrel is? Where the, oil no, the barrel is the square. It's it's the barrel. The oh, cake is in the oh, I thought that was a tree. Okay. okay. No, the the square to the left, the bigger one, is is the tree. Okay. I so I to to summarize, I still have one unseen servant, correct? You have, have three. Two. All of them are fine. One of them is restrained. Okay, okay. In that case, I ordered the other two as a bonus action to roll the barrel into the tree. And, uh, I mean, do uh, I think they, they could... They... One of them as a bonus action. The spell allows Can't you, I just... on each of your turn, you can mentally command the servant. Oh, were okay. they already rolling the barrel? Did they they were, yeah, yeah, the you could turn. just not tell them to stop. That's true, that's true. Was, okay, this, okay, in that case... They're not really going to react to danger in the same way that you would? No, no. No, no, they don't react at all. Okay, that's fine. Um, in that case, uh, in that case, I will blast another one of these creatures with a firebolt. Cool. Um, Pick a target and roll it up. Uh, C, I think. Not C. Don't accident. Don't accidentally blast the barrel. Yeah. Well, well. that's something nice for a one. Yeah. Well, Let's not pray for that. Okay, nice. so your bolt of fire slams into this like little mud creature, and it begins to burn. It's a uh, brown like dirt, quickly like turning into black and white ash, which filters off. But it seems mostly unhurt, and almost whole. All the unseen servants that are still able move. Boop, ba -doop, boop. So it's fifteen feet. Doop, doop, doop. Yep. Do do do. Uh, however, they do get attacked by C. But C's only got one reaction, so one attack versus one of them at disadvantage. Can it see them? Because I don't, I don't know. Can them. you take react? Yeah, um, you can make them. an attack. It has disadvantage. So the one remaining unseen servant manages to push the uh, little little cart, following out your orders, and it what pushes the, the cart. Um, they move 15 feet. Fifteen feet. Okay, it pushes the the cart to the base of the tree. It's not right up against it though, but it's pretty much there. Um, right. Do you use your bonus action to tell it anything? Lift Such the barrel out the of cart. the cart. Put Lift it, the barrel out of the, the cart. cart back. That uh, cart I has tell five it, I... gold pieces. <laughs> I tell it, sod the five gold pieces. <laughs> if we don't kill this tree, we're going to be dead. Um, I tell it to push the barrel against the. Uh, the tree and take the stopper out. Cool. Um, it begins to do such. Right. Um, okay. Um, F wheels round and attacks <coughs> the unseen servant. Um, could you please roll? Oh, 
Right. Can't attack. They have strength 2, but what dexterity? I'll just say it as dex 2 as well. Make a d20 yeah. minus 4 roll. Um, so, C turns around and just goes... Got a naught. I managed to get a naught. <laughs> it just goes like... Onto your, your little unseen servant. And as it's mm -hmm. like lifting the keg over its head, and it's got its hand on the stopper, you just see it get covered in this muck. And just it instantly hardens and solidifies, and you can just see your unseen servant like a little mannequin. It's frozen there, the barrel, the keg in its hand. Okay. And then it's Robin. Lost but never forgotten. Uh, Robin will go over to this one and poke it in the pointy end of its rapier. <laughs> You easily slide the, the rapier into it, and it comes out brown once again. You can see the creature diminishing as you, like, hack at its arm with a whooshing, and it, like, goes bloop, and just turns into soil on the ground. Okay, that's me done. Okay. Um, C then responds by attacking you. No. So your AC is 12 again, yeah? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it goes blah, 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 oh. smashes itself against the floor like a petulant child beating it to death with its only arm. It stands up and fixes you with its baleful, like little cold white eyes. It goes blah 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 blah. blah. Ria, what you do? Uh, how's the oil spread looking so far? It's it's not the the keg was being picked up by the unseen servant, which was you know going to unstopper it. It's just been encased by dirt. You can see okay. like this like little pillar and then a bulge where the keg is at the top. Alright, then I'll it's shoot. It's all just C. covered by this this muck. I'll sneak attack on C. Uh, you don't get hits. advantage once again, but you do hit. Uh, damage. <laughs> Wait, what? You don't get advantage for having an ally there. You get sneak attack for having an ally. Oh I there. thought that right. No no. Sorry. It works. You either have to have an ally okay. nearby or have advantage. Cool. It's either or. So oh, right. okay. you fire um, Rhea, your little bow, and you go, <laughs> and the creature just, like, pops. Uh, Robin, can you make a, a dexterity saving throw? As it just, like, bulges and swells and then bursts with this shower of muck. <laughs> and you find yourself encased in this sticky, brown, thick substance. You're restrained. Lovely. Until the end of your next go. Does that also break the uh, the unseen servant out of its bond? Because you've just, it, uh, or, or even restrain it even more. I mean, what happens? Because it's quite close, isn't it? Um, the it unseen servant one here is fine. D is no more. And does this unseen servant here that was restrained uh, yeah, become un become no does that yeah. does that become unrestrained? Because it it's only be for one round. Unrestrained on your next turn, yes. Right, right, cool, cool. Thank you for noticing that. It was very apt of you. Um, Gabriel, what do you do? I will shoot the last remaining blobolob thing. The blobolob is not happy about being shot, but it has no defense against an arrow or a bolt. Well, too even. bad. It's being shot anyway. And your, your crossbow bolt sinks into it, and you see it just splurt out this sticky brown. Not blood, but, but it doesn't seem to like being filled with holes. Caden Moore. Um... Roll a d20 minus 4 for the creature holding the barrel, and then the other one is un is now free to act. Okay. The, the one holding the barrel is not moving, it's just like, blob, blob. Okay. <laughs> okay, bonus, ac bon bonus action, I ordered that unseen servant to move to the barrel. Uh, standard action, I cast unseen servant there. Um, because it's it's within 60 feet and I order the servant um, I'll be able to order the servant next round so that means that I've got three unseen servants back in play cool okay um, so you order this one uh, the one that can move to do what was that? I ordered this one to go to the barrel push uh, push it against the tree and take the stopper out exactly the same order as okay. I gave the last um, one and this one I can't order it'll be a strength check to like because the, the, the keg is being held by the one that's restrained so yeah, it's the the keg is also restrained. Um, of course. Give me a d twenty minus four for the the one that's attempting to unrestrain the keg, if that makes sense. I hope it does. And this would be a strength test. 
<laughs> if it made any difference, which it doesn't. Has any of the exploring goo gotten on the cart? It's <laughs> fine. Um, your second unseen servant manages to break the like dirt. It just like begins polishing the barrel until it like falls off, and then it takes the keg out of the invisible hands of the other servant. And it uh, goes uh, one, two, three. Or do you want it to go three? Because you want it to put it up against the tree, right? I do, yes. Okay. Um, it gets an attack made by F <clears throat> as it moves away, carrying the keg. Do, 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 do. And it just hits, and it just like goes. <laughs> the keg is. I'll draw the keg in. Red. The keg is now just lands on the floor, and the stopper, which was loose from the other servant holding it, just like goes bloop, and pulls out, and the oil begins to just like spill out onto the ground. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, I'll draw that in yellow, and it just kind of goes bloop, bloop, like that. And what's your action? No, your action was to cast a spell. Yeah, okay. F. Yes. F. Um, hmm. Come at me. <laughs> Bro. Okay. Come on. He can clearly see me. He can't see the other. Hmm. Oh, that's a point as well. Okay. Um, F moves towards you, Robin, and begins to beat you with its gloopy hands of gloop. And you are right, fight. It's just like bloop. Ha, it like slams itself against you like a little I feel obliged like to tell you you got advantage though. Come on, bring it. Advantage from what? I'm restrained. You are? <laughs> ah yes, thank you. Thank you. Ha ha it it goes blue. You're fine. See? You mean nothing. You can't hit me, even though uh, I can't move. <laughs> Robin, if if you could make a uh deck save that would be wonderful. Um, Never but... tempt the gods, halfling. What? You easily manage to, like, shatter off this uh, dirt clod that sticks you to the ground. Um, da, 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 at the end of your turn. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, shatter away from it and give a, give a wink. If you wish. So you can attack can what, the, the creature. Uh, you get an action while you're restrained. No, or is restrained stop you from... Yeah, yeah, I can, I can still attack an action. I can attack with disadvantage. Yeah, okay. It's incapacitated, oh, which is no... Yeah, yeah. okay, I'll do that then. Oh, I'll attack it. disadvantage. Ha! It laughs at your disadvantage, and uh, you manage to avoid hitting it very aptly. You 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 blow just a little too high. Um. So next up, Rhea, if you would be so okay. kind. Shoot sure. Adam. Yes. It hits the ground and does like loop. Nice. Gabriel, what'd you do? Uh, fire at the horrible gloop. The horrible gloop is very hurt from you shooting it. Emotionally, not physically. Um, you shoot it in the face and its head just like goes... And then you see a face emerge on its foot. Oh. Or what uh, might be a foot. It's, it's not really very well defined. It's just a blob, really. It has the right features. Head, arms, feet. <laughs> Maybe. Cadenmore, what do you do? You have one I... unseen servant that's restrained. It can make a uh, d20 minus 4 to free itself. And there's the other one which you just summoned, which is completely free. The oil has like fallen on the ground where your unseen servant was destroyed and it's just like poured at the base of the tree. <laughs> the unseen okay, servant so that remains one... firmly affixed. Okay, so the one that's unrestrained, I tell it to pick up the barrel and basically pour all the remaining oil and just hold it over this tree um, until all the oil is over it. And once that's happened, I'll hold my action, then I'll firebolt it. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think it can easily manage that. I mean, I said the tree was as wide as the person, so... Yeah, it, like, picks up the keg, does a little lap around, and then plots it back. Um, the keg is now empty, and the oil has spilled around the outside of the tree. So, I did warn you, creature. Now you will burn. 
and I will use uh, my inspiration to gain advantage on the attack roll. <laughs> okay, okay. You go for it. Good job as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you get to re-roll that, the, the, the attack. Right. Ten fire damage. <laughs> no, no, no. The inspiration exactly. does not re-roll the one. damage. You rolled a okay. 16 and one damage. Still, all you need to do is set it on fire. <laughs> okay, then. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. You were given fair warning, creature. Now burn. So your bolt of fire slams into the tree, and the tree like catches fire a little, and then you see the the oil like catch, and a ring of flames encircles the tree. And it begins to like blaze up. You can see the leaves beginning to crack and burn as they fly away into the night sky. And the GM check something real quick. Thought as much. Okay. And F turns into just like a puddle on the floor. Just goes. The ground is wet and sticky where it once stood. But it is no more. And suddenly your ears are filled with a screaming sound of a woman screaming. And as the tree continues to burn, you see the bark peeling away. And beneath it, you see the face of a blonde haired, rather simple looking woman. She's wearing a uh, green tunic and plain, simple trousers. And as the fire's like burning, can I shoot the at tree, her? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Shoot her! Uh, Caden Moore rushes up to the tree. Yeah. The tree is on fire and you are forced back by the flames. Um, you shoot her in the, the, the face, but you see no mark upon her. She continues to scream, and as she does, she goes, ah! Ah! Caden Moore laughs manically. <laughs> Burn! Burn! <laughs> One more thing I would like to do is, before the cart catches fire, run and get that. <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> I hope you die, Valeria, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> you will burn, burn too! <laughs> I'm not going to get closer than ten feet or anything. I'm not going to actually Let set my myself on fire. The servants all die. They have one HP. Is there something to shoot? Or from my party members. Cool, you easily managed to get the cart. And as the, the woman within the tree continues to burn, the tree itself cracks. And she cries out, This was not my doing! It was in Shelfie! That infernal path! And then the tree explodes in a shower of flaming debris. Did anyone get that? What did she say? Uh, she said, this was not my doing. It was all the work of the Infernal Shelf. <laughs> the Infernal Shelf? That's, that's pretty much what you <laughs> That's what I heard, too. I was like, that can't be right. I guess well, she was mid-sentence. <laughs> well, in, well, in our, in our defence, we did try and find out everything about this before we bitch-slapped the tree, but <laughs> it was all in vain. <laughs> so the small well. embers of the tree just kind of go... Pfft. The tree is no more. Let's oh, load up Peter, all the all the. We bits. got rid of the tree though, the so they can't deny that. Let's start um, loading the cart that I saved with all the embers and bits of the tree um, to meet uh, Zaudai's list. Caden Moore, could you Sorry. Make a test? Sorry. Getting a bit ahead of yourselves there, boy. <laughs> but the gold. Cool, Caden Moore. As the fire lights up the tree, you notice something a bit strange. The branches high within the tree were filled with owls dead owls hanging from vines almost like a, a macabre gallery of gibbets and as the tree explodes their burning carcasses are showered across the field can i make a can i make a knowledge arcana check do i know what this might mean no but you notice that they're all tawny and you can make a survival check if you wish to learn something more. Nature, wouldn't it be? No, I actually have I actually have survival, so I will make a survival check. Uh, you know that they are all recently dead. 
Does only Cadenmore see that? I mean, the rest of you, you can, but... I'll tell them. I'll Kaden say, the one look. That spots it. Can look. I roll a religion check? Because this seems vaguely ominous. Yeah, sure. Okay. Unless no, I'll just kill I, in fact, in fact, religion. I will use my inspiration. <laughs> so you can legitimately have advantage. Yes. <laughs> Snake <laughs> eyes. Oh, brilliant. Uh, 23. Cool. Uh, 23. Um, hmm. You know of, like, various sects or cults that display dead creatures as a means of warding away those that would enter their territory, or kill small creatures as offerings to their god, but it doesn't ring any, like, strong chord with you that this tree would be filled with recently dead owls. Right, well, the point I was making is that the reason it seems ominous is because Cadenmore sent the same owl to scout ahead and then it died, and now the tree is filled with them. So, I'm trying to get a connection there. Maybe in prophecy or something like that. Or perhaps, I guess not. perhaps the creature, after sensing my owl, decided to kill every tawny owl that came back afterwards. Who knows? Which is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the the tree is dead, and within its shattered husk, you see the remains of this, this woman, now skeletal and black and charred, just lying there. And as you watch, it like begins to like um, fall apart into ash. And you would think that the bone wouldn't, but it does. It all just kind of goes. And the charred embers of the tree lie all around. The cart has been saved and rescued. And as you stand beneath the, the moon in this field filled with just this unnatural kind of air to it, you feel a bit lighter. Aww. I get Lost some weight, boys. All the sex guys did some good. <laughs> I gather up the ashes of the woman and uh, and uh, place them in clean earth nearby. If you truly acted in thrall, then may the, the gods the, forgive the you. The body of the, the woman turned completely to ash. Yeah, There's the no, ashes in no, like, the forest. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you like, I just, find the I paler just, ash I, and like, pick it up. Yeah. Like, hey, um... I just want her. Not, I just want her not to lie in this unhallowed ground. Okay. By the way, can I ask my paladin friend if uh, is this ground still unhallowed? I don't Master know. I check for you. And I, I check. Cool. In the meantime, can you make an intelligence saving throw? Caden, or I? Hold on. Uh... Cool. How close to the tree do you get, uh, Robin, when you're using divine sense? I can be within sixty foot. I don't need to be very close. That's, that's not what I was asking you. I was asking you how close do you get. I don't get any closer do than I ever have done. In which case, you could say it's the exact same thing as before. Uh, the area do you around want, where do you the tree want me? stood. Yeah, I would definitely say. Yeah. Right, uh, well, is it still... Uh, yeah, it's still const... Uh, it doesn't feel as though it has changed in any way from the death no. of the tree. So you still say that. So once again, as I told you guys before the battle, I think it's something connected to the roots. Below the ground. Mayhap. Gonna... Then I do, I do not approach the tr any further. Um, so you don't go pick up the ashes of the woman? No, no, no not I if he tells me it's you, unhallowed. Use your unseen servants to pick it up. Much safer. Agreed. I enact a ritual and summon an unseen servant and do as he I says. Think, I, I think we've had enough unseen servant casualties today. <laughs> <laughs> well, the I'll unseen servants it, rise okay. from your magical powers and stride forward into the charred embers and gather up what of the white ash you can identify as being the remains of the poor woman who lived within this cursed tree. Do you command the servants to bury them? Yes, but far away from... Uh... The tree and the unhall and the unhallowed area. No, in the woods, this okay. woman so you, seemed to be of nature. Alone? No, I would just have my. S I mean, how? F I thought the woods came right up to this where this tree was, or is it, or is the it woods just marked like a, a hex over? Like, this oh, okay, is by okay, no okay. means okay. at the edge of the, the woods. Like the farmland stops where the woods begin, but this this field yep. is just like pretty central in the, in the in the. 
like there's no reason to think that this tree has sprouted up because it's close to the, the woodlands. Mm. Are we Although on the hill? A, a, no, no, we're away from the hill. No, not on the hill, no. The, I mean, uh, not like uh, on the map, but in general, the terrain. Oh, no, it no, hill? it's like flat, fertile land. Or once uh, fertile I'll... land that has now been befouled. I was thinking I'll... there might be a cave that goes under the tree. Mm, possibly. Um, I'll yeah. cast Detect Magic on the Ashes and ask my friend the Paladin to see if the unhallowed effect extends to these ashes. Uh, well, I guess I would have detected that while casting it the first time, when it was ash. Mm, the two auras might have overlapped. Cool. As you cast uh, Detect Magic upon the ashes, you sense a singular aura of illusion. Oh. On the tree and the 15 feet around the tree. Oh, that's interesting. If it's an illusion, uh, well, Caden can we overcome said, said illusion so. with insight? <laughs> Caden Moore hasn't said anything, so. Is Stephen still there? Is he? Stand back! <laughs> Something is wrong here. Caden Moore backs away and uh, let us throw our might at this. And uh, I attempt to see through the illusion. No. Just what illusion? You just told me there was an illusion on the... I told uh, you you detect the uh, presence of an illusion spell. Then I'd attempt to disbelieve the illusion. I have to interact with it, don't I? You see mm. the remains of a charred tree, white ash, burning embers, the still smouldering remains of ground where the oil has burned. Mm. All your senses tell you the same thing. Uh, where was the illusion or again? Around the tree and the ash? The 15 feet of the tree. Like... Just the entire area in which the tree encompasses. <laughs> well, well, I'll, I'll attempt to disbelieve it with insight, I guess. Nope. That's not how it works. How does it work? You have then? to. You have well, to how it works it is, it's an illusion. Apparently, you've been told it is. Why would you believe it? I don't see any need for you to make some disbelief. If you believe it to be an illusion, that is what you believe. Firebolt. I'll keep firebolting the tree until <laughs> until I see, you know, like say m maybe <laughs> I fire into a gap where the tree was, and then if the tree is still there, we'll see it because the firebolt will hit something. And so that's you fire when we get... a firebolt and it flies through and out the other side. I just keep blasting at the base of the tree <laughs> until until I I can burst through this illusion because we have no other so you way. you fire of, uh... firebolts at the base of the tree and burn <clears> roots <throat> in the ground and kick up the dust. Um, roll a d20. Mm. Um. 13. And before long, it is mm, impossible to tell what were the remains of the woman and what are the remains of the tree. All the, the wood of the tree is like ground into a fine ash by your power. Only those bits of tree that were thrown a great distance by the explosion still remain. That I've been putting in the cart to take back to uh, <laughs> uh Do the fucking check again. The desecrated area check. I've used all my uses. Oh. For illusion again. Is the Dwemer still on the tree? You still sense the presence of an illusion. With on, what the? With on the ground surrounding the tree. Okay, I want to circle around the area of the tree, not like closely, but <laughs> maybe a hundred feet. A uh, in... <laughs> hundred feet, okay. Yeah, around and look for any openings in the ground, anything strange. Okay, make an so, uh, investigation check. Right, I believe it's oh, actually just the sheet. Investigate. Cool. The only openings you can see are like where the the roots of this massive tree have thrust open the ground, and peering between uh, beneath them, all you can see is like these roots, which now are surely going to die without their tree. So okay. It does strike you as odd that the the tree 
I mean, it was a big tree, but not that great to encompass a range of a hundred feet with its roots. It does mm -hmm. seem a bit unnatural, but beyond that... You mentioned no, like, before that the, roots, the roots were like moving around, were they? No, no, they're like... They were encompassing the entire area. They're not like moving. They're not ambulatory in any fashion. But when the creatures were spawned. Oh yeah, when when the the when Bill was birthed out, they like moved to birth him, and they moved to accept him. But those weren't the roots of the tree. Those were like um, the vines that were growing up all around the field. Do you investigate I one of the uh, like um, little vine DPS? No. Yes. Okay, I think we so should. Robin, as, as you move over to investigate one of the divine the DPs, they've just like kind of folded in upon themselves, just like... <sniffs> they seem not very healthy. But they are quite sharp. You could prick your hand on one of them, but you doubt they could rend the flesh from you. Well, we've, uh, we've killed the tree. Um, we, we've collected all the things. We, we can go and collect our reward now. This matter is not done. Well, what? no, but we f thing is, no, we want to we wanna hand in this one, get paid for it, and then say, there might be more. And then when more happens, then we say, oh, we we'll do that next job for you. That's how adventure works, <laughs> friend. We need to get money for this, you know. Are you sure you're a paladin? I am a paladin, yes, but I do understand contracts. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And the contract was to kill the tree. We've done that. Yeah. So we need to get oh, paid. Are you sure? Are you sure your oath was not of commerce, Paladin? I know, I, ha I haven't Same. made my oath yet. I haven't made my oath yet, boys. <laughs> get wrecked! Get wrecked! No oath! No promises kept! You're still technically a holy man, though, aren't you? Well, no, no. To be a Paladin, you don't have to follow a god. I don't really... No. No, I just like... I believe in being good in that. And I Look have at to his do it hair. Look at tree. his hair. Does he seem holy to you? <laughs> do you he believe... Do you believe or worship any of the gods at all? Nah, it all seems a bit silly to me. <laughs> Leave I the can poor frown when you alone. say that. Stood firm. <laughs> Do, can I make an arcana check to all try and understand what the hell is going on here? Because this is just bizarre. <laughs> um, you can make an arcana check, but you're going to have to direct the question. Mm. <laughs> like, more than what the hell's going on here. Like, if you pick it, like, because there are inconsistencies here, you can you can see them. If you can pick at them, you might be able to learn something. Can I help? Well, how can, how how can there still be an I'll illusion like... on a tree when we've destroyed it? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Can I, out of character, help him? Like maybe give him some ideas? Um, <clears throat> out of character, yeah, sure. Yeah, like the area below the tree, like it seems like I I don't know. This is speculation, but it seems like the tree is feeding off of something below it because the. Uh, what was it? The desecrated aura was below it, right? Hey, why don't you get your unseen servants to dig on the ground for a bit? We can just sit a fair distance away and just let them dig. See if they dig up anything useful. That's an idea. Because there are I'm no gonna, um We'll wait, and uh, I suggest we get out of here because it's dark, and then I'll come back in the morning, and I will just cast unseen servant after unseen servant until we've dug <laughs> down to the roots of that tree. And I'll have six at a time, and uh, when they just disappear, I'll just create another one. Yeah, make an unseen servant factory. I'm, I'm fine for this to occur. But before, so you, you head back. Before they leave, before they leave, I just want to try one thing. Yep. Right. So, um, I'm going to go to the threshold of just before where it says the ground is desecrated, and I'm going to try saying a prayer to the god Amonit or the Dawn Lord or whatever it was called. Yep. And see if anything. Changes or happens. What what prayer do you say? Um, just a prayer of make things not be evil. <laughs> <laughs> it's called protection from evil or ward, warding of evil. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not like a cleric or anything casting a spell. I'm just just a prayer that you know, okay. lay people would know. Okay. As I see as I see Gabriel do that, I like walk a little ways off of him and do pretty much the same thing, but to saloon. I like see guidance. The moon is still out, right? Yep. Moon's yeah. shining bright. I see guidance. Okay, so you, you walk a ways off and you enact this uh again. The the same thing, but so far that you cannot be heard. And you all kind of don't feel any change. 
and you return to Farmer Giles' farmstead for the night. Um, and I'm assuming you're going out the following morning after having a nice long rest yes. and unseen servanting it's, it's, it's up. Get the factory yes. running. Okay. <laughs> this is so. This has turned into like a weird video game at this point. We're like farming to get to the end of this. Well, when we when we tell the farmer that we laid his son to rest, does he do anything? Um. He goes. The body. I I saw the fire. The tree it is destroyed. Oh thank God! Thank God! I can Send finally bury him. Is. Can you help me carry him? I, I think it's even. probably quite easy. He's he's ashes. Oh, oh! A cremation is still a godly way to go. And you can tell he he perhaps doesn't believe that, but he he that's what he says, and he goes out to the edge of the the field. And goes within the field and collects the ashes after you've told him where his son is and takes them back. He, he literally just kind of shovels them into a bucket because he doesn't know what else to do. Um, <laughs> is there any like other interactions you wish to have with Farmer Charles? He's like, he's really weary and like very oh, happy that you've destroyed the tree, but he, he seems quite like at loss for words. So he's like, thank you, thank you. I yeah, say sorry. to him, Thank you. At, this, at, this, at the center of the tree, there was a woman with blonde hair. She said something about this was not her doing. It was the infernal shell, and then she was killed. Do you have so, any idea what this means? And he, he looks like absolutely befuddled. And he, he goes, the infernal shell? And he, he looks for a moment, and he seems to have recalled something, and he goes, I do recall, recall someone with a, a strange name. Shalfie? Yes, that was it, Shalfie. God. And who was that? Oh, a strange man. He, he came and blessed my fields six, six years ago. Hmm. And he, he looked you like know where befuddled. We, do you know where we might find this man? He seemed ill-kept. He had a a spruce leaf sprouting from his shoulder. I I do not I do not know where he stayed. I I would guess the wilds itself. Right? I had forgotten him. A woman within can the tree. You, can you recall this man's face well? <laughs> and he like like once again does the squinty eyes and he's like no his face escapes me but he was a man of that I'm sure and a spruce leaf sprouted from his right no no left shoulder no right I remember he asked for no payment he simply came to my field one day and I found him standing standing out there and when I asked him what he was doing he, he said he was blessing the ground who did he claim to be, apart from Shelfie? Simply a, a priest <clears throat> of the earth. I I had forgotten him until you said... It was such a peculiar name, Shelfie. You think he is behind this? He has caused all this suffering? Uh, one of the just... religion check on basically what I know so far. The earth, earth priest and uh, cool. Shelfie. Um, like... To you, it sounds okay. like a like a druid. Um, whether a nefarious druid. or not, you you know not. It could also be a cleric of one of the natural gods. Um, judging from the tree and the the woman within, you suspect some foul god, but you can't point to one specific. Twenty one. Twenty one. No, no. It's like there's no iconography. There's no general description. There's. There's Any very... gods associated with trees that are evil? Yeah, how many nature Pick gods one. are there? Pick one and name them. There's as many as there are people to think of them. I don't think, my friends, we're going to solve okay. this now. We should take the information back to Haven at some point, and the authorities there can put out a notice requesting information on this man. A second job. <laughs> 
yes, we should notify them of the shelfie, and he's apparently sowing evil seeds around farm farmsteads. And so that in is the, the meantime, problem. In the meantime, should we dig up these roots and see I, what else we can learn? I, I say to the farmers, no, make sure you tell the townsfolk that we point to all of us. We were the ones that got rid of the tree, right? Yes. Well, I I can put my mark to a piece of paper if you wish. Aye, that that will be good. Okay. So, while he he makes fifty faltering attempts to write his own name, do you go out and dig up the tree? Just yes. put some X. Okay. Are there any special preparations you do before going out to the tree? It looks a lot less scary in the, the daytime. Most of those vines and bushes that have overgrown everywhere look well, they haven't died, but they look. I don't know, less intimidating. The field, the ground. Why didn't we just burn it into your, 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 your feet? The grain begins to like just kind of be nice and yellow, like grain should be. The charred remains of the tree, however, they look kind of desolate and blackened, and all that remains is wet ash. So as you approach the edge of the tree after this long rest, what did it do? did it rain during the night after we got back? Uh, a light drizzle. Just okay. enough to make the ground slightly damp. You heard the gentle pitter patter of rain droplets. Are there any like special preparations when you get like within fifteen, ten feet of the tree? Do you uh, detect magic? Do you? Uh, I suppose yeah. When I get within the area, I'll I'll divine sense again, see if it's still. Uh... How Mage armor detect magic. Okay. We don't How... go within the unhallowed area. Sixty How... foot. <laughs> Sixty foot from the tree when you yeah same thing. Um... 15 feet around where the, the tree used to stand is unhallowed. You can sense that from 60 feet away. Um, detect magic. There's no magic. Okay. Well, let's get digging then. Well, not us. you you little men. What? That, mean, that means the creature has fled. God the, damn it. The illusion aura thing. Was that, that was changed. Yep. The, there is no magic. You can sense nothing magical about the spot. At all. There is no longer a sense of illusion. There's no indication of what the illusion was, since everything well, seems I, the same. I, I, know, I know what it was. It's just that I, you know, I blasted the entire area with firebolts. I knew it was an invisible creature, but there's nothing I can do about it because I can't. I had no way of sensing invisibility. God damn it! <laughs> As a, a, well, a, a quick point for you, um, Stephen, you can't sense an invisible creature with detect magic. You wouldn't oh, okay. have sensed anything if it was an invisible creature. Oh, okay. Because with detect magic, you have to be able to visibly see what you're detecting. Thing, the thing. Okay. Which is also why it was a good idea for you to like dig up a bit of the ground when you were like detecting magic way earlier. Because I could yes. be really dickish and go, "Ho ho! It's below the ground. You detect nothing." But anyway, um, so you command your unseen servants to dig up the the ground, yeah. Yes. Okay. About an hour or so of ground being sifted away, you find loads and loads of roots. About halfway through um, the digging, how far away from the unseen servants are you when you have them digging? Mm. Well, I can't. I can't. I can't. I stray am more 60, than sixty feet away. I can't stray more than sixty feet. So, so I'll stay probably fifty feet away. Okay. Just in case one, one so of them actually. You see, like, one of your unseen servants pick up some dirt to, like, move it aside, and inside the dirt there's something, and you see, like, the dirt fall away, and it's just, like, this, um, lump. And as it, like, shakes out of the soil, you hear this, like, high pitched whine in your ears, like, um, like a dog whistle that's barely audible, and all the unseen servants nearby just, like, wink out of existence as though they've taken damage. And you Avant. See the object, whatever it was, just kind of go plop on the ground. There is something here. My servants have all been destroyed. Arise. Right. Did, did I see the object? Um, give me a perception test. You saw the object, but the question is how much detail about it did you see? Oh, I have that. We all roll? Because <laughs> we're all looking. Yeah, feel free. How how far how far away from the edge of the unhallowed is this thing? Oh, it's just like on the ground. It'll be inside. Oh, It'll be. I'll use ma I'll use mage hand to lift it up from okay. thirty feet away. Cool. Um. So the perceptions twenty one seven twenty two. Um. No twenty uh twenty one is the different roll. 
Oh, it's 22 post scraps then. Okay. Um, you, you see it's a, a root, like a, a parsnip, something like that. But it, it looks kind of like a weird and like squiggly. You can like see these like little two like little stumpy limbs that might be arms. Like it's it is a man lower break. half and it's like twisted <laughs> it. And uh, Stephen, if you could really stop saying things without making knowledge checks. Yes, it's a mandrake root. Firebolt. <laughs> <laughs> we know this kind of thing. We live in a fantasy world. <laughs> Well, I, we, I don't live in a fantasy world, and I know this kind of thing. Well, whatever <laughs> it is, whatever it is, it's dead now. Thing from Harry Potter. <laughs> so as it's lifted up by a mage hand, a crossbow bolt flies into it, and it just goes... <laughs> and flies apart. It is no more. Do, 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 c- c- <sighs> do we think that this... Could this be the source of the tree, or, or is it just a result of it, or could there be more of these things? Feel free to make a knowledge check. Very well. Knowledge Arcana? Yeah. 22 um, or 20. Don't believe that the mandrake is the source of the tree. However, one little interesting tidbit of knowledge you know is that mandrakes usually grow on spots where men were hanged. Uh, or owls. Yes, yes, yes. You also know that so- mandrakes are very useful things, you know, for helping people through childbirth, for uh, <laughs> dealing with problems, aches and aches. You also know that if you put one beneath the bed of someone while they sleep without their knowledge, they will be befelled by a horrible curse. You also know that they can kill if they are pulled out of the ground. You also know that it has now exploded into little kibbly chunks. Mm, We all know that. This is fell indeed. Do I think the the mandrake could grow back from those pieces of um, chunks? No, you don't know how mandrakes grow, but you doubt that it would like re-emerge from the little chunks. The chunks are an infinitesimally fine dust that has been spread throughout the cosmos. Mm -hmm. You definitely sell the parts, though. They're used in most common medicines, as you say. It has been dispersed into a fine mist, invisible to the naked eye. Or the electron microscope. Crossbow bolts are that powerful. They are where they crit a, a a common. Root. Mm. Well, just keep digging. We, we might well, find not more. common root, but you know. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, can the unseen servant things bring some of the roots to us so we can examine it without getting on to the unhallowed ground? They'll be dead. That's the problem. The unseen servants were all destroyed by the the mandrakes. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. The I, I can I, I can, can I can summon some more. I can summon some more if you want, but. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it depends on whether you think there's any more mandrake in the soil. We should dig uh, a bit more, just to double-check there isn't anything else worth finding. Plus, I believe roots well. were one of the things Yaudai wanted to buy from us. Mm, but should we be giving him such things? I do not have a great deal of trust for this man, I must confess. Well, unleashing eldritch horrors upon the town where your customers live is probably not a good business move, so I doubt he's going to do that. No, well, but he might it's it not something. about his motivations. It's about his incompetence. There is that. <laughs> <laughs> he might not know what he's doing and might unleash horrors upon the town anyway. Mm. We, I, I dig some more, um, but this time only to, insu- only to satisfy myself that whatever evil was in this soil is gone. Is it still unhallowed? I'm assuming it is. Is it? Would you use divine sense? Yeah, why not? How far from the tree are you? All foot. the remains. Yeah, the 15 feet where the tree once stood is unhallowed. Yeah, I don't think removing one mandrake is going to fix that. Okay. So Get a you, priest uh, here. Dig some more. Yes. Okay, roll a d100. Um... Wandering monster check. <laughs> As you stand in this field, surrounded by unseen servants, you continue to dig beneath the tree. But what horrors await you? None. Um, after another half hour or so, you find something, and your unseen servant holds up a skull. And as they continue to excavate the area, more bones are found until you have an entire human body, complete with a noose. Uh, very well. We, I ordered the unseen servants to bring it out of the unhallowed ground. 
Cool. And they uh, bring forth the uh, corpse bone by bone. Yes. I heard that you set them on fire and cover them in salt or something. Is that the right? I don't know much about these religions. Yes, that's what Supernatural has taught me. That's how you deal with them. <laughs> I don't know if it's supplyable for this situation. Well, we do you, does, any, does, any, does anyone here have gentle repose? No. The spell. You're the only magic you found. Well. Do, I know, do I know if uh, uh, posit channeling positive energy would actually... Um, take take the curse off this, these bones because I actually can do that if if, it, if, it, if I think it will. I, I could, yeah. Um, I could lay on hands it. You so. don't think it would. Um, the only thing that you believe would take the curse off these bones is a religion check. Ah, oh, convenient. We're that is our, your de- just rogue. <laughs> that is your department. Wee, I'll do it. I told you I'm a pretty bad paladin. You should ask the rogue. Fuck. All the stuff. Okay. Um. <laughs> You know that these uh, bones need, would need to be interred in sacred ground. Though they are malign, such a powerful holy aura would protect those around from whatever spirits they might attract. I guess we'll put them in the cart. <laughs> Tell the paladin, can you, can you conjure some hollowed ground, perhaps? Oh, well, no, uh, that's, that's way beyond me. It's way beyond me. Get I'll more. make a religion. You, you know that... Uh, a powerful cleric would be able to exercise whatever foul spirit occupies these remains. The destruction of the remains would help only superficially, as the disembodied spirit would be bound instead to the location of its death. Placing the remains in some means of holy ground would as well work. Very well. We well, will we'll return these bones and ask the brother, is it Damien? To consecrate them. Well, we know there's hallowed ground there because uh, the farmer said that his, he took his wife to Haven to be buried in hallowed ground. We could bring Brother Damien here and let him consecrate the area. <laughs> but we bring the bones we and then tell the priest to go there. We do both. Yes, indeed. Our work here is done, at least for now. Indeed. Let's go get paid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, you head back to town. And through the magic of end of session, you managed to arrive back with a little problem. So I think now there's a couple stops you want to make. You want to stop at Shaudi's and you also want to stop at Templar Damien's. So which one do you want to handle first? Oh, and you also want to get paid, so I assume you want to stop at the manor as well. I so, think we'll go to the Damien or the Cleric first. Okay, so you roll into town with your little wagon filled up with burnt chunks of uh, wood and the unhallowed remains of whatever spirit this might be. And, and some of the tree roots we dug up, just in case. <laughs> some of the tree roots. Every single part that we asked. <laughs> and you uh, get to the small chapel. It's a small, simple wooden affair filled with, with pews. And as you walk inside, you see a person with heavy plate kneeling before an altar with a thick vellum scroll rolled out in front of it. And he has one metal gauntleted hand firmly planted on the scroll, and he's slowly reading it. And you can tell that he's not the brightest penny as he's going, The Day of... And he hears you come in and stands up, accompanied clanking of armor, and shines his splendid mail at you and greets you. He looks a bit haggard. He's got, like, a beard that hasn't been shaved in a while. His hair's, like, kind of flopping about. But he, he looks hearty enough, and he, he greets you, and he goes, Oh! Welcome to the chapel. How may I be of service to you? Service isn't for, well, till tomorrow, actually. We um, found this... Sorry, you go forward, Gabriel, because you can... Yeah, I was just going <laughs> to... I was going to explain that we went to Farmer Giles' farmstead, and destroyed the devil's tree and dug under its remains until we found the bones of this hanged man which we believe is responsible possibly for the curse that bef- afflicted him ah. and we would like him to um, what was it, consecrate the bones or bury them so that it would end the curse I can perform this service oh, yes. and it needs to be buried somewhere nice there, there is the, the graveyard and 
He, he, he you show him to the, the bones, and he begins the, the funeral preparations. You see him like pull out a um, large flask, and like unstopper it. And inside, you can see clear water with like little um, sparkling motes inside. And he sprinkles the water over the bones, and as the water spills out onto them, an unholy like green fire erupts from the bones and begins to like flame into the sky. And you see the sky like darken. And the clouds have this horrible tinge. And then he like plants his hand on the skull. And the flames just snuff out. And he goes, I, I honestly was not expecting that. They will be buried in the graveyard. You have done the Lord's a great service today. If you have any spare time, you might also want to go down to Farmer Giles' farmstead. For the ground may still be unhallowed. And if you don't like, have any spare time, you might want to make some. <laughs> and he like he like puts his his hand on his mouth and says, "I swore a sacred oath to guard Haven to my last breath. I cannot leave its confines to purge these evils as I will." The farmstead is part of the Haven. Is it? Not? I'm sure my oath can stretch that far. Hmm. Yes. It falls under the protection and jurisdiction of Haven. I will take the matter up with the, the Seneschal, and I will do as you suggest. We'll, we'll tell him you're coming. We're going to be seeing him soon. Okay. And um, Templar Damien, the overly pious, picks up the bones uh, and arrays them to a coffin, which is later buried cinematically off in the distance, as you walk off to the manor. Oh no! First, we'll, we don't want to drag a pile of dead tree up to okay. the manor. Okay, so you <laughs> or do go we? to oh. see a Jaudi. Or this bloody cart either. <laughs> <laughs> so Jaudi, you know, greets you once again. Big burly man, six foot six, black leather uh, doublet, torn off the arms, tattooed arms. Smiles broadly and goes, "Ah! I see by the burnt remains of the tree, you were successful, and a cart full. But all I see." Is burnt embers. No living spruce. Does one As a of you couple, perchance man. carry? <laughs> does perchance one of you carry a vial of sap? Unfortunately, we were not able to get anything. We set the tree aflame, and it burst in an explosion of bits. He like winces and goes. Still, you have brought me one of the items I requested, and an array of it. I will give you half the reward for what I would have given if you had brought all. Twenty-five gold pieces. Minus the five for the rental of the cart. Twenty we shall call it. I shall fetch your money immediately. And he like begins like taking the cart and the paper inside. And twenty-five gold is deposited in your hands. Oh, you said, 20. Master, Master Jaudi, you said the word spruce. I find that most interesting. That's I have wait, heard how? that... Hmm, an odd expression. A common expression. I, uh, I wish to... I wish Use to... insight? Yes, I, w I wish to uh, direct the party to all do an insight check on this man to see if he is part of this evil. Are you sure it's not Fireball as well? I, I did get that kind of impression earlier. 18. Uh, okay. We will start Straight up, D20. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Woo! Cool. Yeah, he all seems he's honest and genuine. It's a common expression. A spruce, a twig, mm. a bough of wood. Mm. I don't know. I'm with you. He, he doesn't seem right. You know what I mean? I'll like just say... I'll just say to Jaudi, some people are overly cautious, but it serves them well in our line of work, so I'll stick my hand out. Shake again and depart. He gives with you like a hearty shake and puts the, the gold in your hand and goes, Gabriel, do not forget our agreement about the records. I'm still most interested uh, in that. I'll come back tomorrow and if you find me a nice quiet place to sit, I'll remember as much as I can. Of course, of course. So you're, you're given 20 gold for the, the stuff and you head to the manor? Yep. Cool. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Um, after a, a short while, you are presented before the guards, 
introduce yourself, tell them that you were successful, you move forward into the Seneschal, he reads the piece of paper that Farmer Giles eventually managed to scribble out, which says, Oh god, they destroyed the tree! Thank the heavens! Thank the mercies! Farmer Giles. Um, and you place it in the hands of the, the Seneschal, who has this luxurious like blue robe, the chiseled goatee, slick back hair, you know, typical bureaucrat, very prim and proper, and he looks you up and down and goes, so you were successful in destroying this fell tree. Not only There's did no... we destroy the tree, we uncovered beneath it the source of the curse, brought it back to town, and had that destroyed. The source of the curse? Yes. A Don't hanged lost. man. A hanged man. Like do you have anything in your... Do you have anything in your records that might throw light on this event? I will check. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm sure that his esteemed grace will want to reward you personally. And he, he looks at you. Um, have you got, like, dirty shoes and the like? I've Probably. got press. Are you hard I've... from travelling? No, we'd yeah. all be clean because I've got press digitation, <laughs> which lets me clean anything. Oh, nice. I am never dirty. <laughs> I didn't hear any yeses, so he kind of gives you like a kind of hmm, looks at you over, and he goes, "You will have to leave your weapons in the here," and he points at the table. I have no weapons, I say, smiling broadly. <laughs> I'm sure your weapons are your words. Would you part an old man with a staff? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. No record has there been of a man being bludgeoned to death. Yes, you will have to leave your staff, I'm afraid. Don't worry, I say. <laughs> it's not the bludgeoning you need to worry. <laughs> fireball, fireball, fireball! <laughs> okay, so... After a short interval, you are... given entrance to where his esteemed grace, Truman von Eristoff, rests in a more luxurious room than the rest of this manor. It actually has like a, a bare skin rug, and you can see cross swords and a, a shield bearing the crest of Truman von Aristoff, which is the, the black background with the, the two downward facing short swords. You can see a couple of guard that actually look like household guard. They, you know, they're wearing like proper chain with nice tabards. They're not like an obvious presence of them, but they're, they're around. And you see Perhaps you are the first, other than his guards and Seneschal, to see his esteemed grace, Truman von Eristoff. And your first thought is how young he is. He can be no more than 20, 21. He has slick, blonde hair, blue eyes, clean shaven, and he's wearing like this regal purple finery, and he stands up and he goes, Ah! Excellent! Destroyed the tree. Wonderful. Your reward. Um... Where did he put it? Ah, there it is. And he picks up a heavy sack of gold and hands it out to you. And he goes, your reward, well earned. 100 Imperials, golden coins, yes. I can tell that there will be more work for you. Come, tell me the tale. <laughs> and he, like, hits the, the table hard. So we'll tell him the tale. Indeed. He yeah, hangs off your every word, man man. leaning forward, closer and closer as you tell him. And he just has, like, this beific grin upon his face and he's like I am glad that you were the men that took the challenge for it seems if any other than you had attempted it they would be quashed but truly you are brave thank you your, gr oh. your grace is kind to say so now thank you for your service I I'm sure I'll be needing you in the future um good day have a have, well, oh, I, I don't appear to me I'm not rude am I I don't mean to be rude no um is there anything I can do for you? No, I don't say that, do I? Very well, thank you. I thank you for your service. You may now leave. Enjoy your reward. Your Grace, may I just ask one thing? Oh, of course. I, I mean, yes, you may impose that upon me. <laughs> as, you, as you heard from our tale, there was a woman within the tree who claimed she was not the, not the bringer about of this injustice, but someone called Shelfie, a wild man or druid, Shelfy, if a man such as this is behind it, then hm, Carlo shall not be the only man I wish to speak with. I mm. shall post a bounty for him as well. I would, I would advise your majesty that since we know so little other than his name and the accusation of a strange illusion and evil thing, that we should um, not encourage people to attack and kill him. 
for that. Might, might, you, might your majesty pass word surreptitiously to his officers <laughs> and reeves in the local area that they might pass word of this man if he is seen in any outlying districts, and then we may come upon him unawares. Hmm. Yes. I shall have it attended to. He waves his hand and goes, Thank you. That will be all. We are honoured. And I as you... As give you, a big uh, courtly bow and turn around. <laughs> as you uh, make your exit with your 100 gold, um, you run into the Seneschal Mishloff. I think it's Mishloff. Let me just check that. Uh, I mean, not that anyone cares about the name, but yeah. Hi. It's Milosh. Um, the Seneschal Milosh is standing outside, and he goes, I indeed found a record of the man who had been hanged. He was sentenced for murder. A woman and her two children. And the sentence was carried out a decade past. There is record of it. His name was Ian. It seems he bore no family name. Tell me, who might know of these records, my lord? No, this is um, the Seneschal. Yes, but who might know of these? Who might have had access to consult these records? Or who would have known of it? Myself? And I guess the mayor of Belkham, before it was destroyed. Uh, what's this destroyed town? The ruins of Belkham. They lie, I think, a day southwest. It was not Haven's jurisdiction which saw Ian killed. But that's a Belkham. A decade ago, a murderer is hanged for his crimes. Six years ago, a druid or priest of some sort consecrates the ground. And last month, the magic tree springs up and drives mad all those who attempt to attack it. It's very strange. Might I ask, Lord Seneschal, on what date was this man hanged? He looks for a moment and goes... Friday the 13th. The 14th of April. And does this ruined town lie near Master Giles' farm? Two days. It is on the other side of Haven. Uh, I thank you. Is, is there, just before we go, is there a particular reason a town so far away would choose to execute their criminals there? Do you ask the um, Seneschal? Yeah. Um, he says, it seems peculiar. My only thought is that the lawmen came upon him there. The records simply show that he was tried and executed for his crime. Mm. It makes By note of the location. <clears throat> though it does not mention that it was within a field. Though I know Giles' farmstead to have stood there for at least 20 years. Who executed this man? Hmm. The man who carried out the execution. I would have to check my records, I do not recall. But Perhaps do you wish the man who gave the sentence? The or the man who pulled the rope? I'm sure I can find both. Do, pray do. Um, he leaves you in the like barren waiting room as he goes to check the records. While he's doing that, I'll just suggest to the others, perhaps he wasn't killed in the field at all but was buried there before the tree sprang up. Aye. That's always a possibility, yes. The, the corpse of a dead man, a murderer, is usually buried at a crossroads in unhallowed ground. It is likely that it was dug up and removed to the field for the... But why that field? It is a strange thing. Okay. If we ever find this shelfie, I think we shall ask him. Indeed we will. But for now, I believe it's time to go to the tavern, have a drink, and go to bed. Okay. So, Here's uh, that. The, the man, uh, Seneschal, comes back, and he goes, 
I found only the name of the man who gave the sentence, Gia Alcibadas. I found no mention of who actually carried out the execution. I'm Gia afraid my records are not as complete as those that would be, well, were, I guess, at Belchaim. Mine are only the listings that are posted, the transcripts. I thank you, my lord, for your indulgence. He nods curtly. And um, as you set off, you, you feel the heavy weight of experience falling into your pockets. <laughs> so, um... There's a large ping go off above all our heads. We, looking over at what gives us XP, we must have done every single category, right? <laughs> we discovered okay. a new location. Had anyone fought those monsters before? Okay, so let me, let me find out real quick. Um, do 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 encounters. Uh, Let the DM do his work. Are we the only God. party who has completed a quest? Nope. Second, the, the second, second party. Um, how much did they earn? A fair wit. Well, uh, they earned awesome. five hundred for the completion of the quest. Five hundred. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, excellent. Um, so, cool. Um, excellent. So there is 100 XP for the discovery, ha ha, of Giles is farmstead. Then for combats, there was 50 XP for defeating Bill, mm -hmm. and 150 XP for fighting the creatures that arose around the tree. Mm -hmm. For the destruction of the tree itself and the completion of the quest, there is 250 XP. Mm -hmm. And then for discovering information, A lot of let's it. go through it. <laughs> A lot of information. So you know that there was a hanged man beneath the tree. You know that the tree possessed illusion and desecrated ground. So you know that the tree was all weird, despite it being mundane. Uh, da -da -da, what would that be? Illusion and... Oh, crap. Why, why am I failing? I just said it. Remind me what I just said. Does desecrated ground. ground. There we go, thank you. Illusion, illusion and desecrated ground. Name of the man who died. Jan. That's three pieces of law. You learned the name of a who suspect. Um, the, you learned the name of the person who gave the sentence, Gear Alcibadas. That's not worth XP, unfortunately. But you did oh, learn the name of Shalfi, a potential lead. So for learning that the tree was not normal, there's 100 XP. For learning that a hanged man was beneath it, there's 200 XP. For learning the name of the <laughs> dead man, there's 300 XP. And for learning about Shelfie, there is 100 XP. Do we get anything for learning that mandrake roots grow near hanged men? <laughs> um, I think you would get uh, XP for fighting the things that arose from the mud. Which are in fact mud methods, so you've discovered a new monster. Mud method. Oh, we get XP for killing the mandrake with my crit. <laughs> Unfortunately, that not. was a very impressive crit. Admit, so yeah. there's a hundred for learning that mud methods well. are a foul and natural thing conjured into existence. There's no XP for learning about the existence of an undead. Um, and what was the other thing? Try to think. Something else, I know there was. Hell, we had loads of things. We learned uh, that the farmer's wife was buried in Haven. But that's... <laughs> we learned uh, that a woman's spirit was trapped in the tree. Yeah? She wasn't complicit. Or she she learned that the hill is dangerous. We didn't learn anything about the woman. So we learned that there was a town shelfing. that was destroyed. Um, no, Balcane's already known about. Oh. It's also um, what about visited. that? Sorry. Say again? What about that hill that we discovered yeah. that was an evil location? You didn't investigate it, so there's no like That's XP true. in there. That's true. You just oh. know something that might maybe yield XP. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. That's um, 1,200. Do we get any for advancing the character roleplay-wise? 
Um, no, like with the with the awarding XP for the advancing your your character, it's not so much just like role playing and such. It's like if your character has a specific goal that they're driving towards, and you manage to make some progress on that. Um, so I think that's that's everything. So uh, I make it thirteen fifty. Same. Da, 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 hang on. Oh, we uh, do ding then, I guess. Yeah. Three, three, seven, point. Did the last party level? Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Cool. So you all get 340 experience points. Which is enough to take us to second level. There is also 120 gold divided by four people, so 30 gold each. Ah. Noise. So I, I believe that's any everything, unless anyone can grab some additional XP. So, hmm. I mean, yeah. I'd like so you've got a, a lot of a lot of stuff there, but yeah, right. So that's been beyond the bridge. This is be the end of part four. I'm guessing we're moving towards. So, does anyone have any shout outs they want to do? Speak to the internet and go, hey guys. <laughs> Uh, I don't really know the internet that well, so it'd be a bit uncomfortable. Oh, shout out to my friend Sim for sending me this uh, excellent T-shirt. Not all those who wander are lost. One of my oldest friends in America, Simeon Lot. Excellent. Anyone else? Uh, shout out to Monster for sponsoring this uh, game. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. You know. Product placement. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get Blaze blown out of the water on YouTube. <laughs> well, that's okay. Don't worry. Everyone knows that you should drink Relentless. Mm. Okay, okay. Relentless. If you want to sponsor me, feel free. Uh, <laughs> although, well, I, I just, I just like to say thank you as well, Blaze. No kidokes. Hmm. Now the question is. What do I do about a shelf? Do I uh, post a bounty? Because it's, it's not going to be a bounty for him, so it'll be... I guess there'll just be a rumor about him. Anyway, um... Right. So... Yep. Um, I think that's everything. So, thank you all for playing, and thank you all for watching, if you've been watching. Well done for getting XP, well done for completing a thing. <coughs> well done for living! <laughs> Very sad. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um... Good day. Oh, Farewell. Did we get a bonus for not taking any damage. <laughs> wow. Whew. No, good one. no, you don't. Sorry. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> you get to remain alive for not taking any damage. That's about it. Can I add one last thing? Go for it. I'll I'll go and tell Damien the name of the man, the hanged man, so that his the cross above his head will actually bear a name rather than just you know a nameless death. John Doe. So, Ian is buried in the cemetery. Womp womp. Nice. Okay, so I think that's the session. Um, Gabriel, remember that you have the bonus action for next downtime to uh, <laughs> scribe some, some tax records for a rather scrupulous merchant. Anyway, Ooh, farewell, The Empire everyone. sentenced me to exile. I don't give a shit about revealing their confidential information. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming along, and farewell. See ya. See you Good next night. time.